Welcome back to the Combo Cabal. I am your host, Brian Cook, and today we're playing Modern Oops All Spells. This was a deck that was super popular before the banning of Simeon Spirit Guide, and while we found a way to make it work after that banning, we're playing it today as a donation deck from our good friend, Brayden. Brayden, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. And if you're interested in seeing your deck here on this channel, Go to theepicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's how you make it happen. So how does this deck function, right? Well, actually, before we get to that, quick word from our sponsors, Eminence Gaming. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting your own commander events with features such as easy to create event registration for four player Swiss based games, event management has never been so simple, and it's on the web, which means no downloads required. You can sign up for $5 by visiting eminence.events slash subscribe. All right, go check out Command Tower for your local EDH or CDH events. It's going to be great. Okay, so how does this deck function? So the idea is that we have multi-facing cards like Turn Timber Symbiosis. Why wouldn't you zoom in? There we go. Seagate Restoration, Turn Timber Symbiosis, Agadim's Awakening, and Shattered Skull Smashing. So when these cards are checked by Undercity Informer, which is a three mana creature, and you could sacrifice it, pay one sacrifice, so four mana total. Target player reveals cards from the top of their deck until they reveal land. Same thing with Value Straight Spy. Four mana baked into the converted mana value, and then, you know, mill until you reveal a land. Well, those cards don't stop when they see these multi-facing cards. They just keep going because they're spells on the front. So, you end up decking yourself pretty good. And among the way, you reveal a couple copies of Narc Amoeba. Well, those trigger Sword of the Meek. So, Sword of the Meek would then enter the battlefield. You sacrifice the Sword of the Meek, and then you Salvage Titan. So now you've played two creatures this turn. You've played an Undercity Informer and a Salvage Titan. Okay. Well, when you milled, you milled a number of Creeping Chills, so you drain your opponent for ideally 12. And then you put four copies of Vengevine onto the table when you cast the Salvage Titan. You swing for lethal. That's the primary way that this deck wins. Additionally, there's two copies of Goblin Char Belcher to belch out the opponent. But this list from Brayden has something a little bit unique. We're playing a copy of Memory's Journey in the main deck to shuffle back in a Thassa's Oracle. So that way, if your opponent has infinite life or whatever, you can win the game with Thassa's Oracle. It's another secondary win condition alongside Goblin Char Belcher in case they have Pythene Needle as well. So that way, the deck has a little bit more flexibility, that sort of thing going on. There is Baked in Protection and Pact Negation. That said, the Pact Negation plan doesn't really work with Thassa's Oracle plus Memory's Journey, but not everything's perfect. We have a progenitus down here just to make sure we don't deck ourselves, which is pretty helpful as well. Um, so I think that covers the main deck. We have a jack-o'-lantern to fix colors. That does help when we have a Thassa's Oracle, but it's not entirely necessary. But it does fix colors from the graveyard, which is sometimes, you know, decent, especially with this memory journey. In the sideboard, we have a copy of Path to Exile. I imagine this is for something like Dothy Voidwalker. Leyline of Sanctity for discard spells. Prismatic Ending is just one of the best removal spells ever printed, so why would not play it? The fourth copy of Pact Negation. Some additional copies of Thoughtseize versus Control Decks. Nature's Claim for something like Leyline of the Void. Same thing with this Wear Tear. Uh, our own copy of Needle. This one seems a little odd to me because it's only a one of. We don't really have any sort of way to find it. Uh, same thing with the Path to Exile. Like, I'm not the deck builder here, so maybe there's something I'm missing, but these one of seem a little bit odd. I do like the extra copy of Belcher in the board. In fact, I'd probably want two copies of Belcher in the board and then an engineered explosives. So there's a couple cards here that I'm not super sure about the numbers, but I'm sure Brayden has a sideboard map that I'm probably just not super familiar with as someone who hasn't played this list before. So don't take this as me saying that these card choices are wrong. It's that I don't understand them yet. Maybe we'll figure it out along the way in the middle of the video. So that's the deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, put those down below. But we're going to hop on in and play some modern oops all spells. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you in the first match. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsworm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We're on the draw. So we have three mana sources plus Belcher. That is the good thing about this hand. The bad thing is that this hand is essentially a mulligan to four. We don't want any of these cards. I think you're actually supposed to mulligan this. There's some argument to keeping because of the Belcher, but I think that's a little bit of a trap because this hand just loses to something like a Thought Seizer or a counter spell, and I don't want that. All right, so six mana sources plus the card we would bottom, which is Progenitus. Are you supposed to keep this? Our opponent also went to six. I think you're supposed to go to five. This is like the same hand. Uh, awkward. I think I'm going to keep and pray. Okay. Mana Confluence, and they're passing. Okay. Um, I guess we'll play the Agadims past the turn. They play a City of Brass. Looks like Dredge. And it is, in fact, Dredge. Okay, well, our 7 would have been good in this matchup, but I don't think you're supposed to assume that your opponent's on a non-interactive deck. Draw. Not looking so good. Um... We have to hope that we draw the oops creature next turn. I'm going to play the talisman. Pass. They dredge. Ouch. Okay. They take a few more points of damage. Or is this conflagrate? Ox of Agonis. Okay. They're dredging. So this is it. We have to draw one of our eight creatures to win the game. And if we don't, we probably just lose. And that doesn't do it. I guess I was supposed to go to four. Unfortunate. Okay, so we lost game number one. It happens. Not going to dwell. We don't need pack negation in this matchup, so we can board that out. I do think we probably want Wear Terror Nature's Claim in case they have Ley Lines in the board. Probably want the Belcher as well. I don't think Ley Lines very good here. I think that's just it. Let's submit. Game two. Nope, Mulligan. We do have the Oops creatures in our deck. I promise you they're in here. We just haven't seen one. We're going to go to five. Mulligan. Still no Oops creature. We do have a Belcher, though. I think I'll keep this. Gemstone Caverns. Okay. Play the Mulling. Pass the turn. Mana Confluence. Turn one, Thrilling Discovery. They dredge a Dark Blast and mill a Golgari Thug. Hit a Creeping Chill and a Narc Amoeba. Okay. Not a bad turn one. We'll take a draw. It's the Wear Terror. Ouch. Tented Prism for two. They dredge again. Getting in there with the Narc Amoeba. Otherworldly Gaze. Okay, so this turn we're going to play the Belcher and the Turn Timber. I'm not going to pay life, that seems very foolish. We're just going to put the Belcher onto the table past the turn and attempt to win on our next turn. So they have 5 damage on board, which puts me to 8. So ideally they would want to dredge into... Um, what is it called? Cre uh, is it Creeping or Crippling? I never remember. Creeping Chill plus Conflagrate. That did not happen. So I think we're probably going to be victorious here. We'll draw. Target you. Belch Belch. Okay. So we've won game number two versus Dredge. Submit. Hey, we've seen our first Oops creature. We have three mana. We're on the draw. I think having these three is really bad, though. I'm going to mulligan. This is bad as well. I'm going to go to five. This hand doesn't do anything. We'll go to four. Okay. 
keep will bottom the sword uh i mean it's not perfect but this is, might be the best hand we've had uh so you might say hey your seven was better than this having those cards in our deck is actually better than having them in your hand where they don't do anything so we just need to draw a talisman or a pented prism for this hand to be a turn three draw for turn that was not good okay that was an awful draw they have land. The one silver lining here is that they didn't hit a dredger off the otherworldly gaze. Cathartic reunion, discarding Stinkweed Imp. That's brutal. Okay. Not loving our odds here. If we want to win this, we have to draw a Pented Prism. Or that. Okay. Play the Talisman. Pass the turn. So they have six damage coming in. We need to not die here. Oh, they couldn't dredge. They couldn't dredge. They didn't have a dredger in Graveyard. We are still very worried about the Ox of Agonis. They're taking one off the city for an, a cathartic reunion. Okay. Narc Amoeba. We need to dodge Creeping Chills. They hit one. Does one win them the game here? I think it does. Because I'm not allowed to play this untapped. I think they just won. Yeah, I can't win. Too slow. That's a bummer. We needed them to not reveal the creeping chill, and uh, I did not get what I wanted. Damn. Okay. We are 0 and 1. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Brayden, I am so terribly sorry. I went to go stop recording match number two and realized that I misclicked and never hit record. Please forgive me. So we're just going to go through the match very quickly here. Ah, yikes. Okay, so we mulligan a bunch. Basically, our hands weren't functional. They have turn one Ragavan. Classic is a Murktide start. We play a land. We pass. And then they attack. Womp womp. They had a Pented Prism into a Channeler. We play another land because that's really all we can do. So they play a Bobble. They use it. They play an Expressive Iteration. So they're digging pretty hard here looking for that Delirium for the Dragon's Rage Channeler. They attack. They fetch. And they're going to Lightning Bolt me here, which I thought was pretty aggressive. But they ended up hitting Delirium. And it ended up being the correct move because there's a pinch point this game in which I have to be able to play an untapped land. So that ends up mattering. The Creeping Chill is a terrible draw. So we have the win followed up with Pact and Negation on our turn, assuming that they don't have another Lightning Bolt. So they go through a number of actions here, and Expressive Iteration digging for that Bolt. They just don't have it. Um, spoiler. So they swing, they put me to five. Once again, I am dead to Lightning Bolt. They connect, and it's the Singleton Progenitus into a ledger shredder so the worst thing they could have here is a spell pierce so we draw another spy we go to two we play the value straight spy we mill our deck and our opponent is going to concede after a couple triggers of course all right they have now conceded the game all right so now we're in game number two the number of these hands you might be saying what like why mulligan them if there's too many combo pieces in your hand you're not allowed to keep so this hand is decent. I mean, we have double spy. We can play on one on turn three, one on turn four. But uh, they, once again, have the classic Ragavan opening that just gets them to be super far ahead. Like, they're incredibly far ahead this entire game. On the play with Ragavan versus a deck that can't interact with it, it's just brutal. Um, so we just continue to take our lumps. They hit our pact, which would have been a very good draw for us. And then they Blood Moon us. I won't lie to you, the rest of this game is just me taking attacks and dying. I never do a single thing. Game number three, we're on the play. Once again, we mulligan hands that have too many combo pieces. So this is a one lander where if you draw land number two, this hand is insane. So we're taking a risk here, but surprise, surprise, it is it Merktide for the third game in a row, turn one Ragavan. 
All right, so that's unfortunate, but fortunately for us, we rip land number two, we play the Pentid Prism, and this gives us a turn three with Pact and Negation back up. Our opponent swings with Ragavan, they connect, they get some card we don't care about, they cast a Consider, and then they play a Ledger Shredder, tapping out, just completely disrespe disrespecting us. We play the Undercity Informer, go through the motions, and eventually we win this game after they make us click through about half the triggers. So it's kind of unfortunate. I haven't actually got to execute the combo in this deck yet, and we still don't get to during this game. They make me go like halfway through it. I click on Salvage Titan, and then they concede. So I'm sorry, um, Brayden. It just, I, I didn't hit record on accident. I still have three matches left to play. It's just, uh, it's a bummer. All right, well, uh, match three coming up. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number three, we are on the draw. And well, I made sure we're recording this time. Once again, sorry, Brayden. This hand doesn't do anything. We're going to take a mulligan. Mulligan. We have one land spy. We're going to go to four. This is the best hand we've seen. Keep bottom the Belcher, the Chill, and an extra land. Okay. I mean, our four card hand was by far our best hand here. Marsh Flats. I don't love that. Grief. Um, I'm going to concede here. I don't need our opponent knowing what we're playing. So, sorry. Leyline of Sanctity comes in. We definitely want the Belcher. We don't need Pact and Negation, that can get sided out. I think I'm going to board out the Oracle package as well. Uh, I'll be honest, Brayden, I'm not a big fan of the Oracle package. I think our deck would probably be a little bit better if the Oracle and the Memories Journey were just two more copies of Goblin Turbulcher. I think that would smooth the deck out. I'm also interested in another copy of Talisman, so that way we have eight two mana rocks. All right, so Rakdos Scam, we probably want Path. Some endings. That brings us to 61. We're going to board out the Progenitus. People are going to hate me for that, but I don't think we actually need it. Game two on the play. We have Leyline, two lands. So the only thing we need to do here is rip a payoff spell. I think I'm down with that. There is a tough decision with the hand that we've kept where you have to ask yourself, do we think that they're playing Liliana of the Veil? Because that, if they are, keeping an extra ley line around could really help towards uh, not losing the game. But if they remove this one, we look a little foolish. I think I'm going to put both into play. I haven't seen Liliana in a while, so I'm going to take that risk. Oh, I didn't play a land. Whoops. Too busy talking. Ah, oh, jeez. That was not good. Very, very awkward. They have the turn one grief plus the undying effect. So the ley line was good. It's just I really needed to play a turn one land. Look like a dummy now. Okay. And that was a good rip. I'm just a turn behind now. Uh, that's frustrating. They swing with the grief. Sacred Foundry. Okay. Play this Seagate. Vented Prism. Pass the turn. So we have a win on our turn. They swing. Okay. We will go to eight. Under City Informer. Use one of the counters. We will target ourselves. Triggers. Yes. Okay. Auto yield. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. So my misplay did not cost us there. So. If you notice they had a Sacred Foundry, they are not black-red. They are likely to have a wear tear somewhere in their deck, so I liked the playing out the second copy of Leyline. We're going to resubmit. Maybe this time play our land on turn one. Game three on the draw. 
This hand, I mean, we have the Belcher, but this hand just loses to a discard spell, and double creeping chill is not great. We'll take a mulligan. Nope. Going to five. I think we're supposed to go to four. Like, this hand already has a dead card in it no matter what between these three. We never saw a ley line. That's a bummer. All right, so we'll keep this bottom Narc Amoeba, the sword, and the Shatter Skull. I'm not going to go to three. I think there's no chance we went on a three. They just have turn one Marsh Flats. We'll play our Black Source first because we need that to not be discarded. We grab Sacred Foundry. I don't know what that means. Unmarch Grave. Oh. Okay. So there's still a chance we can win this if I can draw one of our creatures next turn. It's still very doable. They cast Thoughtseize. Sure. They take a land. Sure. Come on, deck. Please give me the creature. Nope. I think we're probably dead now. All right, Sword of the Meek. Pass. They swing. We take eight total after the trigger. They get to draw a card up to 22. Bloodstained Mire. Leyline of the Void. That probably beats me. But it doesn't matter. We didn't draw the creature anyway. What a bummer. One, two. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four. We are on the play. Nope. Mulligan. No black source, but I think that this hand is fine. We'll keep this. Bottom one of the copies of Turn Timber. So one of the things I'm noticing about this particular list, and Brayden, I'm sorry if I'm disappointing you here. Uh, the Thassa's Oracle package makes the deck less consistent because you're adding more things into your mulligans that you're not allowed to keep. Where if they were two more copies of Goblin Charbelcher, those create hands that you're allowed to keep. So you're, we're increasing the mulligan rate, which I think hurts. And you might be saying, Brian, you're mulliganing too aggressively. I've played a lot of combo decks in my life. You can't just keep hands that do nothing or hands full of combo pieces that need to be in your deck. That's not allowed. Like you're better off going to four and keeping a perfect four and then keeping a seven with three combo pieces in it. So it's part of playing strategies like this. I understand, but it's kind of just how it is. Aether Vile, so we're likely facing Merfolk. Okay. That was a very good draw, wow. Okay. And, like, we could have the Eighth Talisman in the deck to increase draws like that as well. Just because right now we're taking up how many slots? Four extra slots for the Thassa's Oracle combo that I just don't think we necessarily need. They add a counter to their Aether Vial. Cavern of Souls. They name Merfolk. I think I'm actually going to play Belcher here, which might seem a little bit odd. But I don't want to show our opponent our deck. And the Belcher just resolves. Okay. So one of the reasons I wanted to play Belcher here is our opponent left open two mana. If they happen to have a um, the Merfolk that takes away abilities of creatures, it could have blown me out on the spy. And you might be saying, well, you have the Informer. And I thought of that. I was like, well, that doesn't work on the Undercity Informer. They didn't counter it with the... Wow, they let the Belcher go. Okay. Um, I was like, oh, they must not have the Hexcatcher. And then they just let the Belcher resolve. Okay, so there's a Merfolk, though, that... So I was thinking about the Undercity Informer. Let's go back to that. But if they, like, hit a Vengevine or the Salvage Titan or something, maybe I don't win, and I just figure that the, maybe the Belcher was a safer play. Um, Sure, that doesn't do anything. I can't believe they let the Belcher resolve. They're activating the Aether Vial. Yeah, you're dead. Sure, we'll go to 12. Draw for turn. Belch, Belch. I guess we're showing them our whole deck either way. I didn't think about that. Okay. So they get to see our entire deck. I was thinking that we could hide information with the Belcher. That's not true. They the Both win conditions show. All right, so what to do? I think we definitely want the Thoughtseize. We want Prismatic Ending. We want Path. 
Watt Belcher for Graveyard Hate. I, once again, I'm sorry, Brayden. I'm taking out the Oracle package. I just don't think it's what this deck needs. I'm going to board out the Progenitus as well. So that's 62. All right. I think I'm going to board out the Prismatic Endings and board in the Explosives. Take out... Tough call. You know what? I'm going to... I don't know what to do here. Let's try this, I guess. If you are interested in submitting a donation deck, you're also more than welcome to give me a cyborg guide, so I'm not guessing. That is uh, within the rules. I'm going to keep this. It's a little bit slow, but I think it's worthwhile. We have one combo piece, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, having all four mana we need, or I'm sorry, three mana, plus a pact of negation. Admittedly, I thought this Vengevine was a turn timber symbiosis, so, uh, I mean, they're kind of similar, right? If you look at the shape of the art. Uh, not ideal. Shatter Skull smashing. So there's the fourth uh, mana we need. Let's see if I get burned by boarding out the Progenitus in this match. I've been boarding it out because it's really only useful for games in which you need to attack multiple times with your Venge Vines. And they're just passing. Okay, I'm going to play the sword. If they want to counter my sword or the meek, they're more than welcome. Are they going to do it? Okay. Yes! <laughs> Perfect. Love it. They got so nervous about not countering the Belcher in game one that they countered her sword in the meek in game two. Tide Shaper. Okay. They hit our Black Source. It's a very good play in this matchup. We do have another Black Source in hand, though. Talisman. Play the Turn Timber. Play Talisman. Are you going to counter this? They do not. Another hex catcher. Okay. They activate the vial for a Lord of Atlantis. Now they're swinging. So we'll take six. I'm at 11. Am I going to get bit for boarding out the progenitus? I feel like I might. Spy. Okay. It resolves. We'll target us. Okay. So some triggers happen here. They're going to lose. 12 life going down to 8. Okay, so the problem here is I boarded out Progenitus and I have the fourth Vengevine in hand. So we're going to attack with three Vengevines and they can block two and then I'm going to deck myself. Unless for some reason they try to interact with the Munivolt. Uh, what I mean by that is they try to like cast a spell with the Munivolt. Yeah, so I'm getting bit here. Okay, so now we will Salvage Titan. So we're returning the Salvage Titan. And we're going to cast it by sacrificing three artifacts. So now Venge Vines happen. So I'm getting to execute the combo for once, but it's in a spot where I don't actually win the game. Ah, uh, it's so brutal. Stupid Venge Vine being in my hand and not the land that I thought that it was. Okay. Go to combat. And they concede. They actually have the game won and they conceded. Wow. Okay, so I guess I'll take it. Uh, we are now 2-2 two and two with one match left to go. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles 7 days early, on top of other sweet benefits, and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. The fifth and final round, we are on the draw, and I am going to take a mulligan. We have a turn three spy, but we have a chill and a vengevine in hand. Like, you could keep this and just accept that you're going to have to combo twice. You know what? Let's do it. And by combo twice, I mean attack twice. Stomping around. Is this dredge again? Wow, it actually is. Okay. What are the odds? Dredge is not even a popular modern deck. Pass the turn. Blood Crypt, Away from the Loam, okay. Not the fastest start for our opponent. Another Spy, we'll play out the Turn Timber, Pented Prism. We will pass. They had another Chill, Black, Cliff, Cliff, Black Cleave Cliffs, okay. And they just play a Merchant of the Veil, you got it. 
Agadims will play the Turn Timber all the way down to 8 life. Remove one counter here, we'll play the Value Straight Spy. We're not going to be able to win this turn. So this is a matchup where I would not board out the uh, Progenitus just because I think you're going to need it. Okay. Always yes. Fun fact, the three key on your keyboard is yes for Magic Online if you're ever wondering and four is no if you're ever trying to just play a little bit faster. Okay. Salvage Titan, Sacrifice. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, we have to exile other artifacts. Okay, so they're at 13. We can swing for 12, but that's not lethal. Auto yield here. And now we go to combat. Hiya, swing. And now they're at one life. Okay. We have taken game number one. Once again, I am boarding out the Pact of Negations. Wear Terror, Nature's Claim. The last one doesn't really matter. Um, the Belcher. Dodges Graveyard Hate. Leaving in the Thassa's Oracle combo for Brayden. Maybe it will come up. This is a, another turn three. We'll keep. While Narcomoeba is a combo piece, you only need one in the deck for it to work. So if we draw our other copy of Narcomoeba, things get bad. Opponent on a hard mulligan to three. Leyline of the Void. We do have three copies of Goblin Charbelcher and two answers in our deck. Wooded Foothills, they have one card in hand. Alright, we'll play the Agadims. Pass the turn. Gemstone Mine? Okay. Life from the Loam. So they have the Dredge Engine online on their three. So they drew the land they needed and now they're off to the races. We'll take three here. Play out a Pented Prism. Who knows? Maybe we'll get up to Hardcast Seagate Restoration. The world is our oyster. They dredge Loam and reveal a pair of lands so they can fetch and cast Loam for three here. Draw for turn. Another Shatter Skull. I don't really see the point in playing out our Informer against the Conflagrate deck, so I'm going to play Talisman here. Pass the turn. So, I wasn't joking about hardcasting Seagate. We're a blue source away from being able to do that. Alright, they play another land. Sure. Another life from the loam. Draw for turn. Vengevine. Okay, so now we're at a weird spot where we have to ask ourselves, are we on the beatdown plan? Because I could play Vengevine here. I think I'm going to pivot to the beatdown plan. Make one green. Play Vengevine. Cast Narcomoeba. And we can back these two up with Shatter Skull smashing in the mauling to essentially clear the way. Swing. Alright, they milled a prized amalgam, so that's something that can come back in the future. Wooded Foothills, if they fetch here, um, I don't know how much it actually matters. It does put them at three hits to death from a Vengevine, but we have the Narcomoeba anyway. So I guess it matters for like uh, creeping chill math. If they eventually hit a chill, it gets a little bit tighter. They didn't return the land. Okay, a little odd. Another Pented Prism. Attack for five, so this puts them down to seven. And we have an Informer, so that fetch land math does matter here. Play the Pented Prism. I am the beatdown. Seven power on board? How could this be? Narc Amoeba. We, we have the technology to remove blockers. Alright, they've cast another life from the loan, returning two lands. They can now also return the blood ghast, which cannot block for the purposes of what we're trying to do here. This card is irrelevant. It does get back the prized amalgam tapped. Okay. Draw. Nature's Claim. I mean... I can win the real way, or we can win via attacking. I would like to win via attacking, I think. Alright, Shatter Skull Smashing. I would like them to know that their ley line did not save them. Swing. What a way to finish the league. Alright, so we went 3-2, we got our money back. Let's open up the chest, see if we get anything good. Endurance! 
I've been on a heater with opening things up recently. Yesterday, I opened up a Wasteland. I opened up a Shieldred and a Scalding Tarn. Today, an Endurance. Running hot. Love it. Okay. So, changes to this deck. I would cut the two Jack Lanterns, the Memory's Journey, and the Thassa's Oracle. I would add in two copies of Goblin Charbelcher directly into the main deck. I'd f add in the fourth copy of Pact Negation, and then you have one flex slot, which can be whatever you want. It could be another land, uh, because right now this deck list has 17. Maybe you want 18. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, I would actually add in the fourth talisman. That, that would be the change. Okay, so two Belchers, fourth Pact, fourth talisman. Uh, those would be my changes. That opens up a sideboard slot as well. Uh, opens up two sideboard slots, so you could play something else. You could run a pivot or whatever you want, but uh, that would be my thought. Let me know what you think. Um, sometimes I'm not right. Like, it does happen. Uh, I am not all-knowing, so let me know if I'm wrong. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.